Hello, welcome to LSX Engines Tuning and Marine. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a or how I use a uh, dial bore gauge. I've been uh, I got to build a lot of marine engines coming up soon, and uh, in order to check the, the uh, machinist's work, I don't. It's not that I don't trust them, but I want to verify. Um, I've been using this uh, micrometer and a telescoping gauge to check the bore, but it was taking me about an average of about 10 minutes per bore because I would take about 10 readings for this thing. And it, it's it's all wishy-washy. It's kind of a, it's more of an art to us than a science to get this thing here, this this type telescope engaged to work. Um, and then you know, I would have to check each measure one at a time with a micrometer. It just it just was very slow, about 10 minutes per bore. So I bit the bullet and I bought this uh, this Fowler dial bore gauge. And uh, I check MSC Direct, and their price is about $187. I got this on Amazon for about $107. It is uh, part number, um, it's Fowler part number 52646300-0. Uh, looks like it's made in China, but uh, so there's a lot of other stuff. So anyway, um, so I bought this dial bore gauge, and the instructions were, uh, well, they don't, that went on my animals, but anyway. The instructions were kind of bogus. They were worthless. Honestly, they didn't tell you a whole lot about how to use it. Um, so what I did, well, I turned to YouTube to figure out how to use this thing. And so basically the gist of what I saw on YouTube, Summit Racing and a few other sites uh, discuss how to use it. So let's say you want to measure the clearance on this piston. So you would use the micrometer and you measure the piston. Uh, and the, you measure the piston. There's dots on this piston that tells you where you measure it. You measure that dot from that dot. And so you get it. Let's say you get a reading of a 4.0, uh, 4.028, which would be two thousandths under 430. So if you get that reading, then you take your dial bore gauge and you put it in there and you rotate this dial to get it to read zero when you're inside 4.028. So then you rotate the dial. That's zeroing out your dial bore gauge to ro rotate it to zero to get 4.028. Then you go check your cylinder. So when you use the dial bore gauge to check the cylinder, the clearance that you get, so what you look for, I'm not going to do a whole lot of detail on this, but the needle runs around, let's say it was, uh, uh, it read on say about two thousandths on this side of that zero. And the needle would come there and it would stop, reverse direction, turn around, go back. So you found the, the uh, smallest bore there. And uh, let's say it was reading, uh, um, well, let's say it read two thousandths. Okay, well, what that would tell you is that your clearance is two thousandths an inch. You read the clearance directly off the dial bore gauge. That's great. So now you got to check another piston. So you get another piston out of the box. You come measure it. Now you got to re-zero re your dial bore gauge to the new piston and go check the next bore and get the next read. Well, that's pretty time-consuming. and um, It's kind of ridiculous. Um, I don't think that's um, I'm going to, I'm not going to use it that way. That's what I see a lot of the videos on YouTube say you're supposed to do, but to me it makes more sense. If we can, if we can send people to Mars, uh, or excuse me, if we can send probes or, or rovers or whatever to Mars and we launch them, uh, we launch them in one direction, knowing the Mars is on, a, is on the uh, other side of the sun, we use math to know that Mars will be there when the probe or when the you know, spacecraft gets to Mars. We know that math tells us that Mars will be in the right place at the right time. So we should trust math to figure out the board, the clearance of these boards. So what, the, what I'm saying is that, let's say I have a board that's supposed to be 4.030. That's what the machinist was supposed to cut it to. So what I did was I set my micrometer to 4.030 and um, and then I put my dial bore gauge in my micrometer and I zero it out at 4.030. So then I took my uh, dial bore gauge over here and it's, it's still set to 4.030. And I put it in this cylinder. By the way, this cylinder is supposed to be 4.030. I put it in this cylinder and then watch this. Let's see if I can do this right. So, so bring it around. Get it straight over the gauge here right there and it turns around right at zero watch that look at that so that means this bore is perfectly bored and honed to 4.030 inches 
See it turn around? See that the needle goes to zero and, and turns around and stops? So it's basically going to the same point that, that the micrometer was and then turning around. So that tells you that this bore is exactly 4.030 inches. And I'll let you know now, I've already checked off six of these bores. This is a V6. I've already checked off six of these bores, and every one of them is exactly 4.030 inches. So that was done. That was a very good job. So then I've got this three liter mercury, three liter boat engine, and I checked the bores on this, and I told the uh, machinist I wanted an extra thousandths clearance because it's a marine engine. So, um, so what I did, I checked these, and what do you know? The, 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 the dial bore gauge tells me I have an extra thousandths of an inch clearance in all these bores. Okay, so, and I didn't have to go back and reset, I didn't have to go back and readjust my dial bore gauge. I just measured all six cylinders and all three cylinders, or excuse me, all four cylinders, and I had 4.030, uh, actually plus an extra thousandths on the other one, on the four cylinder, because I told them to put that in there. So now I know all my boards. I just write them down, 4.030 and 4.031, I guess it would be. Write all those down. Now, all I gotta do is come back and measure each piston one at a time with my micrometer and take the bore, bore reading I got, subtract the piston dimension, and I've got my clearance. I'm using math. That is a whole lot faster than re-zeroing this dial bore gauge every time you want to take a measurement. That's ridiculous. So I don't know uh, how that uh, became the uh, de facto way to use a dial bore gauge, but I, I think you, my method is much better. So that's how I'm going to do it in the future. And uh, I love this instrument. I mean, it's, it's super fast. I, 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 ch I checked that V6 over there in about two minutes. I had every bore checked. And I was very confident of the reading because it's very repeatable. I checked at the bottom at the top. I checked at the bottom and the top on all six cylinders in probably less than two minutes. And it was taking me probably a good 30, 45 minutes before using this tool and a micrometer. Uh, so that, I knew I had to do something there. So I'm very happy I bought this tool. Um, I'm not too happy with the case keeps spilling all my stuff out. But um, again, the, the instructions didn't tell me a whole lot how to use it. Um, one thing I'm not quite sure on how to do how to use these uh these are little washers here that one says the, the smallest is 0 0.02 inches the next is 0 0.04 inches the 0 0.08 inches and 0 0.12 inches so to me that means if you're using a four inch this the largest anvil says four inch and that's what i've got in here now i've got the four inch anvil so if i take the four inch anvil and add the uh say 0 0.04 that means i should be able to measure out only two four point zero four zero inches that's not the case. When I check this anvil with that with that washer on my, uh, I have a uh, dial caliper, and I don't trust that thing for accurate measurement. It just gets me close. When I checked with the dial caliper, I had 4.065 inches. So, still not quite sure how the rings uh, play into uh, how they play into it. But uh, I just chose the 4.040, and uh, it worked. So, I uh, might have been able to get by with the, the smaller washer the uh, o2 but what i did work so um not sure i'll look look into the washers more to figure out exactly how you know which one to choose but the rest of them should be pretty easy i have a hunch i'll be using the four inch anvil for 99 percent of the stuff i do so that's it i just want to explain uh how i use this new dial bore indicator and uh dial bore gauge and i love it and uh it's a pretty neat, neat instrument you can check uh main bearing clearances you can check rod clearances you can check piston clearances it goes from two inches out to six inches um, and it's a great tool and i uh, have no regrets buying it at all so i uh, hope you uh, enjoyed my video and uh, learned something from it and um, thanks for watching